Hey guys, Yamra here again with uh, another scythe video. This time around I'm going to show you some of the anti-air capabilities of the scythe uh, when going specifically for that role. So if you want to see some of the anti-ground, go check out one of my previous videos which is mostly about that. Now anti-air uh, in my opinion is mostly a support role. Uh, you'll be supporting an invasion or an assault. Uh, because there will be uh, aircraft trying to hinder your ground troops. But I'll discuss that a bit in more detail later. First of all, let's check out what I've got at the moment in the passive systems. A few points just to get the respawn timer down. In the utility slot, I have the decoy flares. And in the defense slot, uh, it says complete armor, but uh, what I'm using is vehicle stealth. At the moment, only the first point, I will be spending more points into it later. The reason I'm not using composite armor is because uh, most of the time you won't be engaging any sort of anti-air from the ground, so it's useless. In the performance slot, I'm using the hover stability. Uh, I did buy the Razer high speed airframe just to check it out, but I actually saw no difference. It might be a bug, I'm not quite sure. I saw no difference in cruise speed anyways. And as a primary weapon, I'm using turbo lasers with the infrared optics, fully maxed magazine size, and a couple of points into ammo capacity. It's currently, currently I have 10 full bursts uh, with that amount of upgrades. And then as a secondary, I'm using the uh, anti-air uh, photon missiles. I haven't really spent all that many points into it yet, just uh, a couple of more for the ammo capacity, infrared just to don't mess up the optics for the other one, and lock on timer to number three. I don't think I will be spending a thousand points to get that an additional five percent. At the moment I'm mostly just playing around with it, I'm not using it all that much, it's, uh, it's very circumstantial. Sometimes it's nice to have it when your teammates are attacking a place with lots of air threats and so on, but uh, it's not my primary mode of playing the site at least. So, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, how you should position yourself prior to engaging the enemy. Ever since the First World War and the introduction of uh, air combat, altitude has been the number one thing you're looking for when you're looking to engage other aircraft. And uh, fighting in planetside is no different. Uh, most people that, like these guys who are flying sort of low, uh, will have most of their attention uh, on the ground or their horizon. So in other words, they're not looking up and that's where you will pounce from. Now, once you've engaged the enemy, you're probably gonna want to start descending a bit, but at all costs try to stay as high as possible and remain in that altitude advantage. The altitude in Planetside is capped at 1000 meters, and I would recommend staying somewhere around 900, 950 meters or so. Once you reach that cap, it's just a brick wall and it can actually make it difficult for you to fly straight, you just hit that wall and you can't go up and you sort of can't roll or anything, so staying at 900 or so meters is a good bet. As opposed to engaging ground targets, engaging air targets can actually, well, this is what I'm doing right now, you're just waiting, you're looking around and trying to find an enemy, whereas finding ground targets, you usually, you know where they are, you go down and try to kill them and maybe you have to pull out. This is much more staying in the air, waiting for a target, target to identified. present himself, attacking them, hopefully killing them, and then uh, going back to, uh, to your place up there high in the sky. And as you saw before, I try to use the third person view when I'm looking for target because you have a larger field of view and uh, it's easier to spot targets below you while staying in a steady hover. Now, as far as the weapons go, the turbo laser is quite straightforward. It's a normal cannon, uh, which has 45 rounds if it's fully upgraded. Uh, as far as aiming with it, well, it's mostly just you have to do it a couple of times to get used to it, but uh, you have to lead them, of course, and you should try to aim a little bit above them when you're chasing them, uh, even if they're flying straight. The missiles are also quite self-explanatory. You have a circular reticle which will uh, allow you to lock onto enemy aircraft when they are close to the center of this reticle. 
and as long as you keep your target in this reticle you will get a lock on and you will be able to fire it takes something like two or three seconds maybe even less depending on your upgrade the weapon will then reload which takes uh, more or less four seconds and you if you want to fire another shot you would once again have to uh, acquire the target so for two consecutive shots once you've uh, fire the first missiles you will have to expect somewhere around six to eight seconds before you can shoot again. Now as you know I have been playing quite a lot of anti-ground with this site before so I at first I was like well I can probably go down and kill some guys and you see like in this situation it would be really nice to have the photon pot in standard and maybe you could uh, end up getting 15-20 uh, kills here if you're lucky. Of course, if you're good with the turbo lasers, you can still get some kills, but if you're like me, not that great with turbo lasers versus infantry, I would just stay away from the ground altogether. Seeing as you're probably not using the composite armor, meaning you're even more vulnerable towards the uh, anti air uh, flak and uh, small arms fire. And if nothing else, uh, like that situation before, it just hurts you so much to see all those tasty infantry walking around, you can't do anything about it. Anyways, let's get back to discussing uh, the anti-air weapons. Uh, the missiles are sort of like the missiles they had back in Vietnam, they're not that reliable. If your opponent is using some uh, quick maneuvers, uh, accelerations, decelerations and so on, sometimes missiles will miss. I would say it's maybe 80% of your missiles will hit. Unless, of course, the uh, opponent is using flares, then they will always miss and you will have to wait an additional 5 seconds uh, before you can acquire the target again. And as you will see this guy doing here, flying in mountainous terrain and dodging through valleys and so on, is also a very effective way of uh, losing a missile that's on your tail. This is just another reason to always try to stay on top if it's unlike this uh, mountain, if it's just a straight up mountain and they're trying to go around the corners of it and you're above it, it doesn't matter that you're going around the corners, you will still be able to hit them. As you see demonstrated here actually, um, this guy is trying to dodge the missiles by going around this little mountain here and if I would have been straight behind him, I would have had a tough time following him and he probably would have dodged all my missiles, if not at least some of them. But uh, once again, staying on top, trying to maintain that altitude advantage oh, yeah. is a huge thing when it comes to these dogfights, especially around the mountains, people trying to dodge, miss, dodge missiles and so on. Uh, another important tip oh, is to know when to use the missiles and when to use the gun. I still mess this up quite a lot, trying to lock on to a... Uh, enemy target when they're low on health and uh, instead of just trying to finish them off with the turbo lasers. Uh, a direct hit from the missiles will uh, shave off roughly 40% of their health, a secondary hit will shave off an additional 40% and they will be left burning. At this point there are quite a lot of people who actually bail out so after sending the first missile in you get them to 40%. I try to always get them to maybe 30% with the missiles, although that's a lot more easier said than done. It's uh, always tempting to throw away another missile, uh, even though you should probably just stick with the guns. Now, most of what you've seen so far and what I've discussed isn't the dogfighting per se, it's more like intercepting other uh, fighters and taking them out before they can do anything about it. And uh, that playstyle is a lot more depending on you actually realizing what's going on, what's the current situation, should you pull out, should you stay in, should you actually leave a guy like this one if he's low on health, to make sure you're able to come back and fight uh, with an intact plane. But should you end up in a dogfight, there are a couple of tricks and tips I guess I can throw your way, even though I'm not very good at it. The number one thing to realize is that a lot of guys will end up in uh, not even turning fights but stationary fights where you're both hovering and just moving around looking at each other and uh, that is uh, actually quite dangerous because you can lose your uh, situational awareness, you're not even aware where you are nor where that guy is. And even though it can be quite dangerous, this is what I usually do when you get into a turning fight. I go straight up and try to get my bearings again, see where they are. They are sometimes they're just 
the left down there looking at for me and sometimes like this guy he actually went back for me but we got some distance from each other and if you're in a plane that's specialized for dogfighting you should be able to take him out because most likely you're going up against someone with rocket pods and you should have a different advantage as long as you keep distance and have him in your sights. And a trick to gain that altitude and uh, get on top is to uh, do an inverted loop. Meaning you pitch down fully to do an inverted loop and while you're at the bottom of this loop you apply afterburners which strangely, strangely enough actually results in you being catapulted upward quite a bit. I will show you this uh, right here. And this is done with the vertical thrusters full up and no throttle applied. So throttle is zero and then when you're going back you apply the afterburners and as you see you end up quite a bit above the mountains which were our starting point. Now for me I usually end up with less certificates or lower score per hour or however you want to measure it, uh, fighting uh, aircraft than I do when I fight ground targets. This is mostly because you usually end up in dog fights and you have to keep your distance and so on, but what can be really use and get a lot of points is killing liberators and killing galaxies. However, this guy decides to fly into the mountain so I only get a critical assist, but killing a liberator with uh, three people in it will get you quite a lot of points at the moment uh, it's a double XP Christmas weekend thingy so it's not applicable to when there's not a dual XP thing but at the moment I think I get like well around maybe a thousand points a bit more even for killing a liberator and it's true for three crew members for killing a galaxy it's even more it can be a hefty sum you can end up with and uh, I think it's a thousand points right now for just the galaxy and then you have like well 300 points per kill so in total you could end up with uh, four five thousand points uh, if you kill a galaxy that's loaded with uh, 12 people although that's a rare occurrence and here's another thing that I haven't uh, touched upon uh, it's not that common but it happens people that lag it's extremely annoying because they're just warping back and forth and that's actually the reason I'm sticking to the missiles here and only finish them off with the guns because trying to gun someone who's warping back and forth is more or less Airborne impossible the missiles however will try to track them and go back for for them wherever they're warping to. Now as far as killing liberators you will want to try to stay away from their rear gun and most importantly don't stay stationary below them because if they have a good gunner they will try to hit you with their Dalton or Zephyr or uh, the normal uh, standard weapon and the Dalton and Zephyr will kill you in one blow and I'm not sure about the other one but just try to stay away from their belly. Once again it's just try to stay over them at all times. And now seeing as liberators are basically mobile artillery platforms, you will often find them in this position, standing still, vertical thrusters on, and just standing there waiting for the ground troops to move around so they can kill them. And what I try to do is, is I start with the turbo lasers because they're stationary and you can get a full salvo in most likely. If you start with the uh, gun, uh, with the missiles and you lock them up and everything, most likely they will start moving and then you won't be able to get uh, as clean of a salvo as you would if you start out with the turbo lasers. And uh, here is another good example of uh, what you can do if you have the right altitude. They have people in their anti-air turrets but since you're quite far up you can still make uh, a kill on this liberator or whatever sitting down there as long as you keep your distance your turbo laser will hit even though if you maybe you even can't spot them you probably can't lock on with missiles from here but just keep at it and you'll get a kill and if there's a guy repairing like here you actually get that kill too because the stuff will fall on him and he'll die from the explosion the last thing I want to talk about is it's not all that air to air related but sort of uh, is the use of camos and special fins and so on on your uh, on your aircraft. While I realize it's a uh, personal choice and you might think it looks pretty cool and so on, I find that uh, if someone kills me and I see they have a specific camo, you can probably bet that I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna try to find this guy to kill me and it's gonna be a lot easier to find him if he's, if he's got a camo that I can recognize. So what you're doing is basically you're setting yourself up for, you know, well, grudge matches or vendettas or whatever you want to call it. 
and uh, that might actually be pretty fun at times but sometimes you just wanna you know stay on your end and do your own thing and just get kills and have fun and not have to worry about some dude coming up to kill you every time of course it's uh, it's possible that it'll work the other way around as well if you're a really good pilot or an awesome dogfighter and you have a camo people will instead of going oh I'm gonna get that guy back they might actually get afraid of you and start thinking to you know if they see that camo okay I'm gonna get out of here I'm gonna try to avoid uh, fighting this guy which I know it could be a good thing as well having fear on your side I guess but if you're like <laughs> like me a decent normal player but you're not that awesome I'd say stay away from the camos because it'll probably just get you killed anyways and uh, that's it for today guys uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, I'm working on a light infantry video it's probably gonna be done tomorrow or something it takes a while to upload these uh, 1080p videos as well so uh, I hope you like them, and uh, if you have any comments, anything to add, any, you know, anything, just uh, write in comments, send me a mail on YouTube, whatever. Or if you want to play with me, just go to uh, Mallory server, uh, European server, and uh, look me up. I'm called Jabber. So until next time, take care, guys. Bye bye. And just the last funny thing here, that was my thousand kill with the turbo laser, and we do a weekend. That's 200 third points. Thank you.